Hey everyone, this is Atari in 83 with my pickup video. The last two weeks or so have been busy for me between eBay, flea markets, and my local video game meeting place that we have in my area that meets every Saturday of the month. And I'm going to show you a couple of things we picked up. I picked up in the last week or two. Uh, first, we're going to start off with my Atari 8-bit cart collection, which has grown out to 160 different cartridges with 150 different titles. And starting off is something I picked up on eBay, Educational System Master Cartridge by Dorset, D4001. If you notice, uh, if you re recognize it, it is an Atari-based cartridge case. Uh, a little bit of surplus that came over from the Atari company when they were selling off um, some of their assets in the early 80s. Uh, the program inside runs the same way as the one that came out for the Atari system, their Educational Master Cartridge System, uh, CXL4001. Ironically, if you take a close look, it's the same number. Um, how they managed to pull this one off is that they have the same type of cartridge. This one was Pilot at one time. And if you look at the back of it, it is, the inside of my cartridge is the same as this one. It's the Atari case with the Atari board, and if you look closely, they're interchangeable um, EEPROM slots. Basically, you can take any um, ROM chip that you have, you can plug it in, and if you're doing it from a different company, your Atari cartridge will become a cartridge of your company. Uh, way to cut corners, they did this in the beginning until they ran out, and then they ended up doing their own cartridge, uh, cartridges for their system. That way, with the Dorset ones, you'll see, sometimes you'll see this style, and other times you'll see it with the brown cartridge. The brown ones are later on, these are the earlier ones. Same program, works the same way, just they use Atari equipment instead of their own equipment for it. Uh, that brings me to my second one, and it's a utility card, Basic XE by OSS. It's a utility cartridge. A little warning on the back of it, I don't know if you'll be able to see what it says. If they mess with this cartridge in any way, they're going to avoid the warranty. Even back then, they were worried about people messing with these things. Can't imagine why. Uh, basically, what this does is gives you an extra 6,000 bytes to work with when you're doing programming for Atari Basic. Or if you're doing assembly editor or any other programming software that you're using at the time. Now, with this is I pay 30 bucks for this one practically. Uh, I won the bid by 4 cents. Which, for this type of cartridge, it's a good deal to begin with. But what makes it even better, for that same price, I got the manual to go with it. Complete. No missing pages or anything. Whenever you can buy an OSS game cartridge, which is what I have here for the same price as a cartridge, or cheaper than the cartridge, you better believe I'm going to be buying that up all day long. Uh, that will be it for my eBay find, but I have a whole bunch. Uh, long weekend. Long week for me. I've been down to Virginia doing my EMS job, and it's, it's, it's been a long week. And trying to do a pickup video before I go back to work Friday is... I was planning on doing this whole video on Wednesday, but they called me in if I wanted to come in for an extra shift, and I don't know why I'm telling you this, you guys are probably not interested in it. But, um, yeah, so if I look a little tired, that's why. Um, yeah, so last Saturday I went to the flea market with my girlfriend. Uh, not much in the way of Atari stuff. They did have 2600 uh, game cartridges for $10 a piece. But I'm sure, like you, I wouldn't pay $10 for Pac-Man, Centipede. Missile Command, Asteroids, Defender, they can keep it for $10, I'll go elsewhere, I'll find it for $0.99 cents or $1.99, and I'll be happy. But here are some of the Nintendo ones that I got. First one up is Russian Attack. If you look, it does have a little bit of ink on it. Someone put their initials on it. Cartridge is in pretty decent shape. No missing labels, no writing on the labels, and anything like that. Next one is baseball. That's Bush title. Nice shape. Once again, 
10 yard fright, the third of the final ones I got at the flea market, I paid for all three, five dollars. Uh, it's a starting, a starting item for my collection, uh, $1.70, $1.60, $1.70 a cartridge, I'm not going to complain about it. Um, from there, went Sunday afternoon to a video game store by my house. Every last Saturday of the month they have a video game convention, meeting house that they have. Which is nice because it's not only, you can buy stuff at the store during regular hours, but if you have extras that you want to sell, they, the, the owner Joe is very cool about it. He sets this up that um, gamers can interact with each other, play different games, buy sell systems, trade, trade games with each other, you can buy and sell to the store. You can do a lot of interesting things. And you, they bring food, you can bring drinks along. It's like a giant video gamers party, which is it's what video gaming is all about. Enjoying it, sharing it with others, uh, not always just being in it for a dollar. So nice. It's nice. It's a nice time. If you guys are ever up in North Jersey, just send me a message and I'll let you know where it is. And yeah, so I was able to pick up a couple of games while I was at the convention meeting place. First one up is Super Breakout. So you know, all the games I picked up were picture labels, not, nothing was text labeled. First one was Super Breakout. A uh, great four-player game on the Atari 2600, one of the few four-player games, Warlords. Street Racer. A baseball game, Home Run. Now I gotta tell you, this game's okay, but nothing beats um, Pete Rose. If you can find a copy of Pete Rose Baseball for the Atari 2600, not shut thing up because that is a very good um, baseball game. Kind of reminds me a little bit on the Atari 8 bit of um, Hardball. I got basketball. I have the same game for um, the Atari 8 bit, and I hate to say they both kind of disappoint me. Especially when on the 8 bit you can play games like one on one basketball with Michael, Dr. J, and Larry, Larry Bird. Um, bowling. Now this game is actually very fun and it can get addicting. I mean, it, it, it's it's a fun time. It's not that difficult to bowl over 100, 150 if you can figure out the pattern on how to throw the ball. It's a, it's a good game to play with another person, like your girlfriend or whatever. They don't want to play anything too difficult and you don't want to just sit there playing baseball all day long or anything like that. Um, I got Night Driver. I forget how good this game was, if I remember correctly, it wasn't that hot. I know I'm just bashing the games I'm buying for my own personal collection, but... The classic Pac-Man. Picture label by Atari, it's not the CS1. Um, just to give you a heads up, I do on rfgeneration.com uh, game reviews for the Atari 8-bit computer line. This particular week I've been doing Pac-Man which I always believe was a good part over from the arcade um, version of, its, of the video game. Video Pinball. Th this is a good game to relax and just play because it's easy, it's simple, mind-numbing, and surprisingly fun. Now if you look at the label, you'll see both labels are lowercase. This is like Missile Command. You'll find ones that are the both lowercase, the both uppercase, and then you'll find ones that the top label's one, the bottom label's another one, the end label's a different one, I mean. And it gives you four different cartridges to um, collect. But, and with Video Pinball, you also have the text label to collect. So. Final one for the 2600 is Solaris, which is, if you can tell by this label, it's red. It's part of the 2600 Junior line that came out in the late 80s. This one came out in 88. Um, the only other item I really want to show you guys, it's a homebrew that I got. It was it was kind of my answer to why I bought the Atari 7800 at the flea market. I picked up the Nintendo games the week prior to it. 
first of all, the woman had it for $5. I'm not passing up on an Atari computer or video game system for $5. Even though it was missing the power supply and it was missing the AC cables and the TV cables, it was just the console. I'm not passing up a system for $5. Like when my buddy's online who does um, his own pickup videos, you go to hell if you pass up a system that cheap. Um, from, from Atari H.com I picked up Princess Rescue, which also comes with the manual itself. This is a Mario type game, the first 16 levels of Mario, I believe, for Mario Bros. 3. Uh, for what the 2600 can do, it's a very good variation of the game. Um, I really would appreciate it if the game could go all 32 levels going across 4 plus, no, it was Super Mario 1, I'm sorry, 4 worlds, 8 worlds, 4 levels each world, it would be nice to go to full 32, but the 16 that they did with it, it was a very good turnout on how they did it. Um, yeah, that's about it for this week, I'm just making sure I didn't leave anything else in the, the pile that I've been making on the side here on my shelves of stuff to report back to everybody. Um, yeah, follow me online. I have my own website for the Atari 8-bit computer line. It's my online digital museum that I'm building up. As I get more stuff, I'm going to add it to the website between games, manuals, boxes, systems, accessories, disk drives, modems, printers. Third party I'm working on. So that's www.a8museum.com. A8 museum.com. Uh, we also have a page on Facebook that will cover the same thing. Just type in a Atari 8-bit museum. They'll come right up. Uh, I can use any love and ads I can get uh, people interested in that type of thing. Um, I'm also on AtariAge.com. I'm on RFGeneration.com. On there I'm under A8 Scooter. You can go on there, you can read up on my back in time segment on the blogs. Each week I go over a different game from the Atari 8-bit line like I was mentioned earlier. Um, so far I've just done text write-ups, reviews on the games with a couple of photos of the screenshots. Um, I'm incorporating gameplay with a video like this that I do for pickup videos. I look forward to doing that. And yeah. I think that's about it. If you have anything you want to buy, sell, trade, let me know. If you want to give me comments and feedback on my pickup videos, I'm more than open to that. If you just want to shoot the breeze, let me know what you think. Want to just comment on your favorite games for the 8-bit line or just anything in general, hit me up. Uh, feel free to like it, subscribe. I can use this nice uh, people interested in my videos, just like the other guy. Show some love, I'll show some love back with uh, subscribing to yours. And that's about it for this week. Um, I'll hit you guys up next week, or next time I get enough goodie pile here to make another video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you guys later.